Hi everyone, my name's Alana Wexler from teachtraffic.com and in today's video, I'm going to walk you through step by step how you can create a Google display campaign the right way so that you don't fall for any of the classic mistakes that I see people make and therefore you have the best chance of getting success with your Google display campaign. Sound good? All right, but before I walk you through step-by-step step how to do that, and I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna create a campaign on this video, you might be wondering what actually is a Google display campaign. And essentially that is advertising on other people's websites. So think uh, publishers out there like the New York Times, the LA Times, or I'm in Australia, so the Sydney Morning Herald is sort of a classic uh, publishers, their newspaper websites, and you can advertise and put a banner on those websites without having to go to them directly. You can advertise on them using the Google ad platform. And there's literally over 2 million uh, other web, uh, people's websites that you can advertise on that you can access via the Google display network. Okay. You also might be wondering, how do you decide where you want to put your ads and essentially it's broken down to two main categories. The first is based on the content on the website. So you might say, I've got a website about dogs. I only want my ads to show on websites that talk about dogs. So you can uh, target websites based on the content of the page or even be very, very strategic and say to Google, Hey Google, I only want to advertise on this particular website like the New York Times that I mentioned before. Uh, and so you can be strategic to that level, uh, which is called placement targeting. So you can target people based on the content of the site, uh, or you can do what's called behavioral targeting, which is targeting an individual rather than where someone is right now on the web. A classic form of behavioral targeting would be a retargeting campaign. Somebody's come to your website uh, last week, let's say, and because of that behavior last week, you are then advertising to them today, regardless of where they're traveling on the web. So that's one form of behavioral targeting. And there's a, and Google's very much going down this route now of uh, what's called in-market targeting, um, affinity audiences, and there's a whole suite of them. So that's sort of beyond the scope of this video. Uh, perhaps that's another video. You can let me know in the comments if you want me to create a video that talks about the different targeting options for a Google display campaign. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to assume that you know what type of targeting that you want to do. Okay. So as promised, let's dive into an account and I'll walk you through step by step how to create this display campaign. Okay. So here we are in a live account actually. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit this plus button to create a new campaign. Like I've mentioned in my other videos, I'm going to assume that you've already set up conversion tracking so that when we launch this campaign, you will be able to determine the effectiveness of your ad. So I'm not going to go through that. I'm going to assume that's been done. So we're going to click this plus button and I'm going to create a new campaign. I always recommend people to create a campaign without a goal guidance because that, although, um, you know, Google's saying, um, you know, well, they don't really like you doing this. This gives you all the possible uh, settings available at your disposal. So I'm going to click that. And here is where I choose the campaign type. And as we mentioned, we're going to be creating a display campaign. This is one of the sneaky settings I'm going to suggest you change here uh, because I am not a fan of smart display at the time of this recording, obviously. <laughs> Perhaps that will change later as they improve smart display. But for now, in my opinion, I uh, don't like smart display. It doesn't do very a very good job. So we're going to change this to be standard display. Okay. And here we give it a name. So let's just call it uh, display and retargeting challenge because that's just the one that I'm going to be creating as per this example. And then we click continue. And here is where I need to select my campaign 
settings okay so the default for me has been Australia because I'm recording this in Australia but obviously you would put in uh, the location your desired location that you want to advertise so let's pretend even though I'm in Australia I want to advertise in uh, United States so I can put in enter another location and I can type in United States and target that and then uh, yeah so that's what I've done here I can also um, there's a little sneaky setting here with, with the lo with the t location options. The default setting here is for people in regularly in or shown interest in your target location. So I personally like to change it to this one, which is people in or regularly in my target location, because I don't want to advertise to people who perhaps are in another country, somewhere anywhere in the world, but who've shown interest in my in the United States. I only want to target people in my desired location. So I've done that. Um, and you can also exclude people. So let's pretend I want to exclude people in Australia <laughs> for uh, arguments purposes. I type in Australia and I can do exclude here. So I tar my target location is United States and I exclude Australia. If that's what you want to do, if you doesn't, if you don't mind, um, it's just an extra level of security. And sometimes, if you see when you've got a display campaign that's been running for a little while, other countries kind of popping up because of this. People in regularly in some other countries can sort of slip through the cracks. You might have to also exclude some countries as well. But I'm just going to leave this as is because why not? You can also, if I click on advanced search, I can also do like radius targeting as well. So you could be hyper, hyper focused. I've done this actually for many clients in the past where we might do a display campaign, but target a certain radius. So let's just, uh, one thing we, um, we, we could do, let's say Beverly Hills, 20 mile radius around Beverly Hills. Oops, that's done Beverly Hills in New South Wales. I don't want that. I might want to do Beverly Hills in Los Angeles. I'm just giving you an example. Uh, Beverly Hills, LA, California. Here we go. Uh, we can do that. And you might find you just want to do that. Once again, I'm just giving you the available options. I'm just going to close that and I'm going to cancel that. And these are the my location targeting. Okay, so obviously when you do it, you put in your location targeting. I'm going to click on more settings here because I've got to watch Google. They're pretty sneaky. And I want to make sure they're not slipping anything through the cracks that I don't want. Uh, add rotation. Um, what they're going to do here is they're going to skew impressions towards ads that are doing better versus if I want really want to do a split test so actually I personally like do not optimize because I want to rotate ads indefinitely so I can actually compare the performance and run a proper split test let's do more settings ad schedule all day uh, devices you may decide that you want to adjust uh, for desktop and, and mobile devices I'm just going to do all devices for now that's fine. Our ad schedule, that's fine. Start and end date. Okay, cool. Then we click uh, next. I'm going to put in a budget of $1. Obviously, I can change this and I will be changing this. I just always do it as a default, uh, just as an extra layer of security. So here is my bidding. If this is a new campaign and a kind of a new sort of venture I definitely want to do manual bidding I don't want to do maximized conversions starting out so this is Google's automated bidding where they're going to decide how much you're going to spend on a cost per click basis the, the problem with starting with this is often they don't Google doesn't have enough data for their machine learning to really know who you want so I like to control bids effectively starting out so I can I don't spend a fortune right and I can um yeah not kind of waste a lot of money while the machine's learning so I personally like to manually set bids uh, we can focus on conversion that's fine um, and I also we can do this um manually set bids let's just do this manual cpc and i'm going to deselect enhance cpc because this is giving google permission to bid more than my maximum cost per click okay so i don't want to do that so my um 
I'm going to put in my bid here of let's say 50 cents. Okay, and obviously we can totally change this later and I can show you how to do that. We click next, we've got to add our targeting and obviously you can see on the left here, this is the step-by-step -step process that we're going through. Okay, so remember I mentioned at the start of this video, either content or behavioral targeting. So, um, you know, keywords would be content on, on a website, topics as well as also the content on a website or placement might be a particular website one with, that we want to target or we could do audience segment. So if I click on this one, this is going to, uh, if we go browse, uh, these are affinity audiences, our in-market, um, you know, similar audiences, etc. So let's pretend that we want to do an in-market audience, in-market segment, uh, let's do business and service. Oopsie. I want to go into a subcategory, advertising and marketing services. So this is the people who would be in the market for uh, SEO and SEM services, which is exactly kind of what I'm going to be promoting. Uh, what I'm going to be promoting for this particular campaign is a retargeting challenge. So anyone who wants to learn retargeting is really interested in SEM, which is why I have chosen this particular in-market category. Okay, makes hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so we click done, and that is the form of targeting that I have chosen here. Okay, click next. And here is where we are going to create our ad. Okay, so the default now is that you need to have a responsive display ad, okay, in which you upload um, a bunch of different images, headlines, text, etc., and Google will mix and match them accordingly, okay? So here is where we first put in our final URL. As mentioned, this is where we're sending people to. And I type in that URL. Okay, and this is when somebody clicks on my ad, where do I want them to go to? Okay, so I want them to go there, add images and logos. So we go here. You can put in your website, which I just did prior to hitting record, and it will scan your the landing page to find um, images that it could possibly use. Uh, or you can also upload images. So I've got um, a couple that I'm going to upload. So I'm just going to pause this video real quick to upload it. So I've just uploaded uh, a couple of images. So I'm just going to click save. Oh, I've got to select them. Whoops. Select that ratio. I'm going to select that ratio. Okay. Um, let's also use this one. Select those two ratios and then we click save. So here we have a couple of images that we could use. Actually, we need a logo. So I'm going to go back in real quick and I can use that logo. That's fine. Cool. Okay. And as you can see here, it's going to be updating um, my an example of what my ad would look like. Okay. So we can say uh, we've got a character limit so of 30 characters. So we've got join the retargeting challenge that's already on the image. Okay, so then we can think of possibly a different headline that we can add. So you can add up to five different headlines here. Uh, you've also got the possibility of a long headline which is 90 characters and up to five different descriptions. Okay, so I'm just going to pause this video while I fill this in because <laughs> it might be quite boring to watch. So I'll be back in one second. Okay, so I have filled in uh, some of the, just some of the details. I haven't done it all and you definitely do not need to fill in all possible different headlines and descriptions. Sometimes you're just happy with what you've got and you're happy to run with that. So I've just done two headlines, uh, one long headline here, uh, you know, join the challenge, discover how to create a retargeting campaign on Google and Facebook, that's fine, blah, blah, blah. And I put in also uh, my business name. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, it's rotating through the example and sa sample, uh, um, I guess, you know, what the creative is going to 
look like and we can just scan through here uh, what it all looks like it's pretty self-explanatory cool so then we click next and we're going to give our ad group a name now I like to call my ad group whatever is the targeting that I've chosen okay so I like to call it in market SEM services right that way when I go into my campaign once it's been running I'll be able to know which ad group is doing which targeting and I highly recommend you to one type of targeting per ad group okay as you can see here one thing here that I wanted to edit is to use optimize um, so that may go beyond your targeting so I'm going to deselect this okay and I'm going to click next um, and then we could also add in another possible ad variation. I don't want to make this video any longer than it needs to be. So you can add in another ad quite easily here. Uh, and then um, you can have multiple ads. But with responsive display ads, it's going to be mix and matching lots of different types. So possibly it's not worth it unless you were testing lots of really different uh, creative. And I'd say images would be, probably be the biggest things you'd want to test. Uh, and then we click next. And we're going to publish our campaign. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that you may want to add in some placements to exclude from your campaign. So how you do that is you go into that particular ad group, you go to placements and exclusions. And actually, we have a whole list of default exclusions which we upload uh, and lots, lots of like junk websites as well that we like to exclude. Thanks Ilana for this great tutorial. If you also want to set up Google Ads search campaigns and avoid some really big mistakes then you should check out this video that Ilana did earlier for us and also head over to her YouTube channel where you're going to find more tutorials on Google Ads. Now my name is Julian. Happy measuring!